Welcome to the Tourism News Wrap. My name is Jason Amu. Coming up, Senegal reopens for international flights. Africa Tourism Partners launches associate program. All set for Africa Tomorrow Virtual Conference and Tunis Air CEO fired over alleged corruption. The Blaise Diagne International Airport in Senegal has reopened for international flights. This comes as the West African country eases restrictions to get tourism restarted. The Minister of Tourism and Air Transport, Alion Sa, who conducted a final inspection ahead of the opening, said the mission is to ensure that the provisions of the health protocol are effectively implemented by the various stakeholders to limit the risk of contamination and spread of COVID-19. As more and more destinations gear towards the restart of tourism activities, National Tourism Boards have been advised to make the consumer a pivotal part of their restart strategies. Speaking on the CEO Town Hall State of the Industry meeting, the Chief Executive of the Seychelles Tourism Board, Mrs. Sharon Francis, said the pandemic should help destination managers to factor in the end user in their plans. Would still remain on their, on their, on their list okay, of please, things. Yeah. <laughs> So we don't really need um, a huge amount of visitors uh, yeah. because we don't really do the mass. As long as we can really target um, to the, the segment and, and um, it's, it's more now quality tourism. It, it's, uh, it's really going yeah. into a segment that you try and tap a little bit more um, to get them to visit so that the country may start collecting a bit of foreign exchange because again we, we we depend on tourism for that and a lot of our things in Asia are imported we don't have enough uh, land to manufacture our own things we have to import almost everything so um, to at least start receiving a bit of foreign exchange say um, travel will pick up definitely um, but it's, it will be a different kind of travel. And as tourism board, we just have to, to, to know what it is our customer want and, uh, and seize it. Um, there is no such thing as a bad crisis. And I think uh, the crisis uh, have taught us all good lessons uh, for the future. As the novel coronavirus continues its damage on businesses, especially on tourism SMEs, Pan-African Group Africa Tourism Partners have launched its associate program to help tourism enterprises to weather the storm. Core amongst its activities are capacity building, skills development, coaching and mentorship. The CEO of Africa Tourism Partners, Kwa Chidonko, throws more light on the program. So the program is uniquely designed and, and positioned to offer professional and expert support to all Africa's small medium enterprises, as well as startups across the travel, tourism and hospitality industry. And the, and the reason is that we believe that there is a lot of capacity that is required within that particular sector. And this capacity that is needed is now more eminent considering the situation that we are all going through as far as COVID is concerned. So, Countries are doing their best to support, but when it comes to the practical learning, the practical approach to learning, the practical support that people need on the ground, it's very difficult for countries to offer that. There are a lot of webinars, there are a lot of conferences taking place. These are still not resolving the problems of these SMEs. So we felt that it's important that there is a dedicated support program to support them in any form or shape. The Kenya Tourism Federation has welcomed the announcement by the government of Kenya to open the borders of the country from August 1. President Uhuru Kenyatta on Kenya last week announced the resumption of domestic and international flight services. The chairperson of the Federation, Mohamed Hersi, in an interview with Tourism News Wrap, applauded the decision and believe it will help restore some confidence. Yeah, we are happy that uh, His Excellency the President finally uh, allowed us to reopen the economy, <clears throat> and specifically uh, on tourism, because uh, the cessation of travel uh, in Nairobi and uh, Mombasa uh, was completely, had completely stopped you know, uh, any tourism business. And now that uh, local flights are beginning on the year 15, and international flight is set for first of August, uh, we are ready and uh, starting with the domestic market, people are very eager to start getting out of Nairobi, to start getting out of Mombasa, 
and uh, including the region, you know, eventually they will have to come to Kenya because we are surrounded by very many landlocked countries like Ethiopia, Rwanda, uh, Uganda, and uh, all our neighbors will have to come to the Kenya coast, for instance. So we are very happy that finally uh, the, the, the cessation of movement and call it the partial lockdown uh, has been lifted, although uh, there is concern about the infections and all that. But uh, the, it's also clear that you know the virus uh, is with us globally, and it is with us uh, for a long time to come. So we might as well live with it. All is set for the first virtual conference dedicated to Africa's tourism, aviation, and hospitality sectors. On the 21st of July 2020, the Africa Tourism Conference will be featuring six hours of essential insights delivered by 100 plus speakers, networking opportunities with thousands of industry peers, live video meeting functionality, and a virtual expo to meet some of the most innovative industry brands. The Proving platform will offer stage sessions, live networking, including one to one video meeting functionality, an exhibition area, and much more. It's organized by Bench Events and Eviadev. The relevance of data to the tourism sector cannot be overemphasized, let alone during this unprecedented time of the novel coronavirus. The World Tourism Organization's Tourism Data Dashboard provides statistics and insights on key indicators for inbound and outbound tourism at the global, regional and national levels. Sandra Caval, the Chief Market Competitiveness at UNWTO, gives an insight into the dashboard. So what we wanted to, to do with the dashboard is really to bring our data to life. UNWTO has a wealth of statistical data um, that's always available to, to anyone that wants to use it. But we wanted to, to bring it to life with this dashboard. At the same time, this is a project we launched early um, this year in January uh, with COVID coming in in, uh, in March, obviously the, the relevance of having information has become even more important. So we've included the short-term data for, for monthly information on the countries, but also a very important tool, which is um, a policy tracker of all the measures that the countries are putting into place to mitigate the impacts of COVID. Um, so you can select a country and see exactly what kind of fiscal measures are being implemented, uh, what kind of measures now in this new phase to restart uh, tourism. You'll have the links to the protocols that some of the countries have started to implement. Uh, measures, for example, to simulate domestic tourism, either through vouchers or through specific uh, marketing campaigns. Or Tunisia's Minister of Transport, Monday, July 6, fired Elise Mnakbi, the CEO of the national carrier Tunis Air, who has refused to heed the decision, according to press reports. An official note from Minister Anwaf Marouf to Mnakbi, which circulated on social media, indicated that Belgasem Taya has been appointed as caretaker until a new CEO is appointed. Marouf also asked to arrange a meeting of the airline board members in view of informing them of the decision. Baba Hotel is offering guests some attractive packages as it welcomes guests to its pristine coast property in Mombasa, Kenya. The hotel has been closed since the cessation of movement as a result of measures announced by the Kenya government to contain the spread of the novel coronavirus. Director of Operations at Pullman's, a sister company of Baba Hotels, Mohamed Hesse, gives more information on the offering. Uh, we were also closed and we are now planning to reopen on the 1st of August after very elaborate uh, systems put in place to follow the guidelines and the protocols that were laid out. And uh, we've trained all our staff, we've done all the uh, uh, you know, markings to have the special distancing done, the staff had been trained. And uh, we are now ready uh, you know, for business so that we start receiving you know, our clients, both local and hopefully uh, international. Also, we are giving uh, very good uh, rates very attractive rates uh, to both uh, domestic and also regional, uh, you know, uh, visitors. The the moment we start now, we have the um, uh, Madraka Express, our train, you know, coming, you know, from Nairobi. Uh, it means that we are also able to tap into the Nairobi clientele and up up the country. As Namibia awaits the opening of borders for international flights to and from the Hosea Kutato International Airport, the Namibia Airport Company is feverishly preparing with the necessary health measures and protocols to ensure passengers fly with confidence and seamlessly. In a tour conducted for tourism representatives, media and other stakeholders, the airport company assured them of the airport's readiness to welcome back passengers. There's more news on www.voyageafrique.com and all our social media platforms. My name is Jason Amu.